Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Got a few things to discuss in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. Here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. XRP now available in 72 countries with combined GDP of over $8 trillion. Now, if you look in terms of actual adoption of XRP and pick your metric, uh, almost every metric you could possibly imagine. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to think of one at the top of my head that is, where this isn't the case. It, it's all just been heading up to the upside for over a decade now. You know, despite, you could find little blips here and there where things go to the downside. Obviously, the uh, SEC had a very negative impact for a period of time, uh, but, but still, things are moving to the upside. XRP is available just about everywhere on the entire damn planet. Might that be of material importance? I'd say yes. Um, also, I purchased some more cryptocurrency, so I thought I'd just share a little bit about that just for the fun of it. And uh, then I got an update from one of my favorite chart analysts who thinks that, uh, you know, as, as far as it pertains to Bitcoin, which leads the market, and I'm fine with that, uh, we might be seeing a, a, a dramatic tick to the upside rather than a pullback to check support. And I'll explain why he's saying that. But, uh, but before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. As I record this hot jam, XRP is currently 61 cents, Bitcoin at 34806 bucks. Uh, you got the asset class at $1.3 trillion. Haven't seen that in a hot minute. Crypto Fear and Greed Index. This won't surprise you because things have been very happy, happy lately. Uh, 68 out of 100, so the market is still in greed. And so what is it that I've been purchasing? Well, um, I, I, the last time I purchased, I did mention it. Um, so some of you may have caught that video. I only mentioned it in one video, though. And that may have been, I can't remember exactly when that was. Maybe it was a week and a half ago. Maybe it was as far back as two weeks or so. I don't know, the days blur, blur together. But back then, I, I mentioned that I purchased uh, some Bitcoin, which, you know, you can make fun of me for that <laughs> because I hadn't bought Bitcoin literally in years. But here's the deal, like my bag, before I bought more recently, my bags were packed, I was ready to go. But the thing is, I keep earning more money. So while I'm waiting and I earn more money, I need to put my money somewhere. I, I just, it gets to the point where if I don't do stuff with the money that accumulates in my checking account, it's, it's a problem. I don't want too much money in a personal checking account, right? And so I was just like, well, just diversify, you know, and maybe just sprinkle a little bit of... Uh, goodness right on top of the bags I already got, you know, expand them a little bit. So I was like, you know what, whatever. Bitcoin leads the market. I know that. I know it's not going to give me life-changing wealth. That ship has sailed, you know, on the Bitcoin front as far as I'm concerned, at least for me. Um, but I, I was like, I'll just get some. And then I also purchased some HBAR, which is one of my larger positions, and I increased that by about 11%. I bought more Flare, increased my position because it had gone down so much by 45%. Because I'm just looking at the price which has nothing to do, like nothing's changed on a fundamental direction other than things have gotten better if you're looking at the fundamentals of Flare. That's my opinion anyway. And so I, I purchased a bunch of that. Uh, I mean, 45% increase, that, that, that ain't nothing. But it's just, it's so damn cheap right now. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely take that because I think that the whole market's going to be moving up and there's not, relatively speaking anyway, there's not that much money in Flare anyway. And, and so th that was what I shared about a week and a half ago, whenever it was. And since then, I had shared on social media platform X a couple purchases I made, but I hadn't mentioned them yet, I don't believe so, on, uh, on my YouTube channel. And there, so there were two additional ones. And I, I opened for the first time since the beginning of this year a brand new position. I bought a coin that um, I'd been looking into. I first started years ago, uh, but when I was doing my serious research a few years, a few years ago, uh, this thing just started taking off. And my policy for myself is when a coin starts taking off, that's that. I missed the train. Too bad, so sad, but I've got other stuff. It's fine. And it did. And, and the coin in question uh, is VeChain. I did finally purchase VeChain. And I got it at, well, I started thinking about it when it was around 1.6 cents. And it, it, when I purchased it, it was around 1.9 cents. But I, I think the all-time high is about 27 cents. So I, I, don't, I don't care. I just, I, I looked further into the state of things now. Uh, I didn't spend a crazy amount of time. I, I, I knew enough already because I just, I kind of needed a refresher admittedly because it had been a few years. Um, so anyway, I purchased a certain amount of that. And uh, then also uh, today I purchased uh, more Algorand. And I, I substantially increased, I literally tripled my holdings of algorithm that thing has that price of that it's tanked so much 
And there are there are good reasons why. I mean, if, look, alts were really taking it on the chin in general anyway. So that's a factor. And then on top of that, you can, you know, you you guys tell me how, to what degree these things cause the uh, you know the problem. But there there was negative stuff in the news, including having to do with the SEC. And then there was a DeFi hub, a major one that that was shut down. I believe that was in the the first part of July. There, there were things that happened, but I, I I don't suppose like I don't see any like I don't see evidence at this point anyway that seems going to like cease to exist. I don't see anything like that. And if, and if that's the case, then maybe I lose all of my money. But it's just it's gone down so much in price. I literally tripled my holdings. And so no, I didn't purchase XRP, but that's just because it's already by my largest individual holding by a lot. And I just got to a point where I recognized, like, if I continue to just buy XRP, like, I'm freaking nuts. I need to diversify, which is why I've been doing this. But despite the fact that I've been buying only other coins for over three years now, uh, XRP is still, by a lot, my largest individual holding. I'll just say that. And it is what I'm counting on for the bulk of my profit when the bull run finally heats up and we get alts kicking off here. But you know, my personal opinion, and, and by the way, look, this is not an invitation to do what I did. I just have fun sharing stuff, you know, and I don't talk about myself a whole lot. Not, well, this isn't like on a personal individual level. This is just about like a thing I did as it pertains to crypto, but I don't even do that so much. Um, but I just thought I'd share it because it's fun to have conversations along these lines anyway. I'm always curious why other people buy the stuff that they're buying too. There, there's no necessarily right or wrong answer. It's just, it's subjective. It's opinion based. Uh, but this is definitely not an invitation to go do what I did. I'm just a dude on the internet. I could be totally wrong and everything I just did could be bad decisions and it all goes to zero. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> I just want to be totally upfront with you. Um, but I, I I have the thought processes that I have. I have the convictions that I have and I do various things for various reasons. I have various ideas of where I might sell certain things. And I'm very happy with my crypto positions and I hold way more crypto uh, than I ever thought that I would prior to a bull run. I'll just say that. I am ready to go. I do not need a huge multiplier effect for it to be like I just won the lottery. So that, that, but I've been planning this for six years, money. Like this doesn't happen overnight and it's still not guaranteed. It hasn't happened yet. So I could still lose everything. It goes to zero. And then I'm just a sad panda. Like that, that could certainly happen. But, uh, but I just, I think everything ultimately is just going to go and we're going to have a really fun time. And the one that I get still most optimistic in, honestly, for so many reasons I've been articulating on this channel, I've been running on the channel almost five years now. It's XRP for so many reasons. That's that's the sweet spot for me when it comes to investing in crypto for a lot of reasons. But here you can see Algorand. This is the all-time price chart for Algorand. You take one look at this, you can see it's pretty close to its all-time low. It's worth 11 cents, and that's about where I bought it. I can't remember if it's exactly 11 cents or like 11 point something cents, but yeah. It's in the gutter price-wise. So I thought, yeah, i got to scoop me up some of that. Because the, like, think about this, Solana, think about Sol how dead Solana was. Everybody pro proclaimed it was dead. What did it increase by like three or 400%? It had a crazy run so far this year. I, and I don't own any of it. I don't own any Solana, but good for the people that do. And so I'm just saying <laughs> the market does what the market does. I'm just, I'm just making sure I've got exposure here so that when things go, it goes because the market moves in tandem. So I'm just diversifying. It's not, it's not complex. I'm not a finance guru. I'm a regular human just like the rest of you. There is nothing special about me. And I, I just, doing this is certainly a lot better than not having exposure. I, I, that's what I believe, what, what I'm doing anyway. Now, directionally, in terms of what to expect with Bitcoin, there was uh, this update from Credible Crypto. Uh, and this update was from a little over 12 hours ago at the time I'm uh, recording this video. And he wrote, and this is a Bitcoin uh, USD chart. And he said, here's what I'm watching now. The blue region, for those of you looking and see where I'm circling my mouse, he's got it right there. The blue region is where we had over-aggressive shorts pile into what ended up being a false breakdown. From there, we put in a clean five-wave impulse to the upside, the lows of which are now our local invalidation. Lose those these lows, and we probs flush down to $33,700. Hold these lows and head back to the range highs in an impulsive manner and our bottom is confirmed to be in and up only resumes with haste. And so, and that's an idea that he, I, I, you know, he's been expressing this kind of general thought and it's been evolving as time has passed with the most recent updates, but I was kind of sharing some of his thoughts on this in the video literally about 24 hours ago. And he has a further update on that. So he's saying, yeah, you might see the pullback to the 34,000 something range and then you're just going to keep go back to up only, right? 
Uh, but he has an additional thought. And I, he put out this video just um, within the last, I don't know, a couple hours or so, whatever it is. And I watched it, and very interesting. He wrote that this is a major update on Bitcoin. And I don't want to regurgitate all of this stuff. I try to stay away from regurgitating TA as much as possible. Sometimes it's a little necessary, but I'll just share with you this. The general idea here is that there are certain metrics he's looking at as it pertains to the price action of Bitcoin that got him very excited. So excited that in the middle of the night, he decided to record a seven-minute video. And I don't blame him because part of what he found here is that there's there's such activity, and, and one of the, the metrics he cited was volume, like intense volume, that he, he thinks it's quite plausible that there could be so many institutions and buyers front-running um, you know, the next move up that we might not see that dip down that he was thinking was most plausible. He thinks we might just, from here, whether it, resol it may resolve in the next few days, whatever it takes, but it might just, when it goes, just up to the upside without that pullback uh, to test support. Now, that would be, that would really be something. I mean, talk about strength in the market if that occurs. So I just found that to be fascinating. And that's the very latest from him in a nutshell. But I do encourage you, if you've got time, hop on to social media platform X, go to his account, at Credible Crypto. You can check out the video. It's a quick one. Um, and then there was also this. Somebody named Decode Jar, not familiar with the account, but it doesn't matter, wrote that uh, Cardano breaking out while everyone looks at Solana. And I do have Cardano. I've been holding it since... 2017 actually and um you can see the price you know october 19th this is a 30-day chart for cardano it's down to 24 cents now it's up to 32 cents lots of stuff has been moving here you love to see it some things more than others obviously incredible crypto had a comment about this he said i don't own any cardano and really have no interest in it from a fundamental perspective but despite what most people seem to think a lot of these dino coins are going to make new highs along with other alts in the next major alt season post Bitcoin a new all time high, in my opinion. Right. And so, uh, you know, XRP is certainly even older. You can call XRP a dino coin. I mean, I don't think any of us here in the community would be offended by that. It just means it's an old coin. Awesome. But it's still way more technologically advanced than, for instance, Bitcoin and many others. Like it's it, it's so blazing fast. You don't you don't need to improve upon that. For, it's fine. Even if it even if you had a coin that settled with finality in one second, guaranteed. It's so marginal. You're not going to supplant XRP when it makes no material difference to the end. You'd have to find a use case where the two seconds actually matters. And then, okay, fine. But broadly speaking, you know, XRP is not being used for all sorts of stuff where that doesn't matter. So you're not going to supplant XRP in terms of its position. It, it, it already has the, the position it has. But the point's not lost on me. I, I just thought I'd highlight because, and again, I've been trying to make this point a few times. Just, I'm trying to beat it into people's heads. People feel defeated. The coin that they hold, when it's not going, they see other stuff go, oh my God, it's never going to happen. Why is mine being treated differently? Am I the dummy that made the wrong decision? Well, I'm telling you, the market moves in tandem and these coins, roughly speaking, get treated about the same, broadly speaking. You can find outliers and there are some little asterisks to there if we want to have a really in-depth conversation about this, but broadly speaking, yes. And so if you think that XRP isn't going to be treated as absurdly as Bitcoin has in terms of people filing in and just saying, take my money, then you're wrong. That's what I believe anyway. I think that it's going to go, XRP is going to go absolutely ballistic. And it's nice to see stuff creeping up right here. And, and that's why right now, to be honest with you, like oh, Bitcoin's been creeping up cool, but like there are so many altcoins that are, we're probably about in the lows for, for many of them anyway. And so there's a good chance that I'll actually be, be purchasing some more stuff. And I might even open some new positions. Like I said, the first new crypto position I'd opened since the beginning part of this year was a uh, V chain. And um, the one before that, it was, it was flare when I got the, when I got the, the first flare drop. And then after that, I did buy a bunch of flare and I bought it more recently. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, cause it's not every day I open a new a position in a new coin. I usually just top off my bags but there are so many out there. I'm thinking, eh, why the hell not? I just, again, I've been ready for so long for this thing to lift off. And I understand you don't necessarily to have like dozens and dozens and dozens of coins to make it in crypto. I totally get that. But I've been, it's like, where, you, where am I putting my money, man? Damn it. Like, you tell me, like, where, should, where, where would you have me put my money? You know what I mean? Like, I got to put it somewhere. So at this point, it's just like, I guess I don't care that much, even if I put it in this and it goes to zero. I kind of don't give a damn because I think that the profits I make from the things that do take off will more than offset anything that perhaps will go to zero. And I'm not under the illusion that I'm going to make profit from every single thing I put money in. 
I mean, if maybe that happens, that'd be magical. I doubt it, though. I'm probably going to lose everything that I put into some of these coins. I assume that's going to happen. But that's why I'm saying, like, I don't care. By the time this takes off, like, it's a lottery ticket as far as I'm concerned. And if I'm wrong about all this and it goes to zero, I've, I've never counted on all this for my actual retirement. So it would be life changing for me. And that's what we're all trying to get to because we're just, like, I'm not rich. Like, I'm, I consider myself to be doing well. And I don't want to say anything beyond that, just like to keep finances and net worth and stuff personal here. But I, I would say that I'm doing well, especially for my, my age. Uh, I just, I, I, I turned 40 this year and I'm, I'm happy with where I am. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm rich, but things are good. And, I just, I'm like the rest of you. I believe that crypto is a vehicle to get us to that next level where we otherwise would not in all likelihood be, at least not with this type of speed, right? It's game changing. And then I can reinvest all that into all sorts of stuff. Like I'm sure you guys have thought through this, right? Whether it's real estate um, or, you know, whether it's, you know, equities, but you pick your thing. You, you buy those yellow rocks Peter Schiff keeps showing. You can buy those, you know, the gold. But uh, the, there's so much opportunity there. So anyway, I just, I don't know, I thought I'd share some of my thinking on that. Uh, and then there's this, XRP now available in 72 countries with combined GDP of over $8 trillion. XRP may now be available in up to 72 countries within MISA, a region, which is uh, Middle East, Africa, and South Asia, following its recent regulatory approval by Dubai within the DIFC. The Crypto Basic recently disclosed that the Dubai Financial Services Authority, DFSA, the independent financial services regulatory body in the Dubai International Finance Center, DIFC, uh, approved XRP under its digital asset regime. The approval would give license, cr licensed crypto-focused companies operating within the DIFC the liberty to offer all forms of crypto-related services for XRP, including trading, lending, and and others. And so I wanted to highlight this because it's 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 a couple of reasons. First of all, it's like always exciting to see expansion and a further adoption of XRP, including from a compliance perspective, because XRP itself is decentralized. There's nobody in charge of it. There's there are parts of the world that get this, and so they just bring it in. And that 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 will result in more adoption of that particular cryptocurrency. If it's XRP, of course that's going to happen. And then juxtapose that to what's happened in the United States, and it's like, ah, god damn it. But <laughs> The good news is we got our happy ending and XRP was found to not be a security. It would have been nice if we had, you know, actual leadership, uh, you know, at the federal level of the government. But hey, we got it the hard way. So we're still good there finally. Uh, but it's just nice to see this regardless. And I just kind of want to point out, this is the direction things have gone, as I cited at the outset of the video, for over a decade now. If, if it keeps going that direction, you tell me why XRP wouldn't be worth way more. You guys make that case to me if you think that. Not that you, you, you listening necessarily think that, but you get the point I'm making, right? Of course. So it's like, why wouldn't it? Unless you think crypto is going to cease to exist, which is a silly-ass idea as far as I'm concerned. And so I don't need to read the whole article. I just want to make a broader point that it continues to be adopted. And they cited 72 countries in this region. And uh, the dollar figure, uh, if I could find it real quick here, is $8 trillion. They wrote it. It's probably on the screen, and I'm just not seeing it right now. Where the hell is this? Oh, come on. Where the hell is it? You stupid little... There you are. I found you stupid little number hiding from me. Uh, and so they wrote here, uh, the Mesa region boasts a combined nominal GDP of over $8 trillion per recent estimates. And I'm, I'm just noting here, like, when you're talking about... Especially if you're talking about international remittances... There's, even if you're just talking about Ripple, and, and it's, it's fair to talk about them in this regard because, I mean, hell, Ripple's, um, they're having their swell event in D Dubai, I believe. I, I, the, you need to bridge currencies. You know, I just, I, I've spoken about ad nauseum for years. And there's a lot of dollar value here. And there, there's a lot of places to do this. And increasingly, we're going to see this as you receive uh, in various corners of the world this regulatory acceptance. This is just the latest example here. XRP is traded um, in every region in the planet where cryptocurrency is traded, so far as I know. XRP is on pretty much every exchange that exists at this point, including the United States, which is nice to be able to say. So anyway, we gonna get ours. What have you guys been doing? You guys been buying any stuff? 
Let me know in the comments section below. I need, I need I, maybe you should show me something. <laughs> I never say that. But um, I, I'd be willing to just throw some money to, up, up into the air. Just, I got to put it somewhere. And it's just, I, I have this belief that it's based on historical data that the market moves in tandem. So I may just put some stuff in some stuff. But, um, you know, as long as there's, there's got to be some sort of reason, like I would prefer this. There's got to be some sort of reason to believe that there's an actual there's actual utility or, or, you know, some sort of reason to believe that there's the technology is such that there would be some sort of broad adoption for, uh, you know, X number of reasons, because I'm, that's what I'm interested in because, and because we don't know what's going to be here for sure in a, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. That's why at least at this stage, I'm willing to have broad exposure. And I accept the fact that probably a lot of the stuff that I own, I'm just never going to sell because it's never going to go as high as it would entice me and it, I'll just lose it. But, but that's okay. Like I've been willing to accept that for, well, ever since I jumped into crypto, honestly. Uh, but I, I, I just have a strong belief that certain cryptos, especially utility-driven ones like XRP that I, I purchased, purchased boatloads of, I do believe those ones are going to go. But um, yeah, I just, I'm willing to jump into a few others here just for the sake of it because I've got money. And yes, I put money, I do invest money elsewhere too. But some of it I do want to put into crypto. And I went about half a year probably without purchasing crypto. And so now I'm just like, well, you know, I, we're probably for altcoins more or less at the bottom for, for some of these things anyway. I'll just I'll just pick some up. And so that's kind of what I've been doing, topping off bags, nothing crazy. But, uh, you know, the multiplier effect, if, if these things do go, it could, it could be substantial. So we'll see. You guys just tell me what you think. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.